So a couple of weeks ago, I did an episode about the fact that the Army Chief of Staff had grounded all of the Army airplanes until the units did a safety stand down. So the active duty units had a week to get it done, and the reserve and guard units had until the end of May to get it done. So as a function of that episode, I got an email from a warrant officer at the Connecticut National Guard unit in the Hartford, Connecticut area, and he asked if I would present to them a safety lecture at their mandatory training. So I'm here at Andrews Air Force Base, where they keep Air Force One. You can see some of the DV airplane tails over my shoulder here. About to get on an Army C-12, and they're gonna fly me from Andrews up to Hartford, where I'm gonna give the lecture. I'm gonna talk about some of the episodes that I've done that have kind of a safety theme, um, and some of these you're familiar with, the Kara Holtgreen episode, the one where Reb had his radar dome hit his canopy, where I had the canopy coming off an A4, the Nashville mishap, and uh, some of the other sorts of trends that happen in military aviation. So I'm, again, very flattered for this invitation, and uh, hopefully I can document the entire trip here uh, and, and make an episode out of it. Today's sponsor is Raid Shadow Legends, completely free to play game with millions of players. Raid Shadow Legends just premiered a limited animated series called Raid, Call of the Arbiter. You can watch the first episode for free within the game Raid Shadow Legends. New episodes will be released every Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern until July 20th. Raid is also releasing lore videos and behind the scenes content on YouTube. This limited series expands the world of Raid in a way that's never been shown before. Raid Shadow Legends is celebrating this launch by adding a bunch of Call of the Arbiter related features, including new bios ranging from champions from the show and fan favorites like Death Knight and Sky of the Drakes. Everyone will get the chance to get Artak, one of the five new characters from the show, as a playable legendary champion for free just by logging into Raid for seven days between now and July 24th. Use my exclusive link in the description or scan my QR code to get the epic champion Knight Errand from the Banner Lords faction and other bonuses that can give you the advantage as you set out to do battle. This is probably the most exciting time to jump in if you haven't played Raid before, so check it out now. After a little confusion, we're headed to the airplane here. The, uh, the Air Force personnel have been very patient, uh, so let's see what we got. Okay, so we're trying to figure some stuff out here. Um, want to make sure this airplane's going to Hartford for its first leg. We're here. It's a C-12. Hey, Ward Carroll. I'm recording this from my YouTube channel. Hey, nice. So, first leg to Hartford, is that true? Uh, no, first leg is not to Hartford. Where is it? West Ham. And then we're going to Hartford yes. after that? Okay. So, do the guys on the Hartford end know that that's the case? I believe so. Okay. All right. All right, so we are going to Hartford ultimately. A little stop on the way. All right. How's it going? Hey, so who's our pilot? Uh, Chief Warrant Officer for Wood. And where are you based? Uh, based out of McGuire. Okay. New Jersey? So we're first leg going to yes, New sir. York, right? And the uh, second leg, we're going to Hartford. Correct. Uh, FOK, I think that's... Uh, There's been a little bit of confusion this morning on who's going where. Yeah, we got a late change last night. Yeah. Uh, let's see, where is that? That is West Hampton. Yeah, we're going to West Hampton, then we're going to uh, Bradley, Connecticut. Roger. Okay. All I want to do is run away Pack up and leave all my problems back at home Wonder should I go or should I stay Wish I knew the answers but I just don't know But soon enough It's the catch enough Cause you gotta take a chance You gotta face some head on Head on Oh, the places that we could go All you need is to believe it Oh, the places that we could go Do you see it? Do you feel it? Cause you and I could go flying How We could go anywhere that we want to Anywhere that we want to 
want to All the places that we could go All I want to do is fly away Cause even when I'm running I feel stuck in a place Every day I'm dying to escape But even if I do nothing will ever change Heart beats fast As the moments pass Cause you gotta take a chance Or you'll never know what you've been missing Oh, the places that we could go All you need is to believe Oh, the places that we could go First leg complete Good job, guys. Time. All right. So, where are we? Hampton, New York? Uh, the Hamptons? The Hamptons. Uh, West Hampton, New York. West Hampton. Is this where all the rich people are over there, the no, coastline? They're, they're further down. They're oh, yeah. okay. So, this isn't the Hamptons. This it's is the West Hampton. Hampton. Right. Okay. Correct. So, this is the first leg of a two leg. They're taking me, what is it, we've got 60 miles for the second leg? It's like 66 miles straight 66 north. 66 miles straight north to get to Hartford. So, and you guys, which unit are you with? Uh, the 228th out of McGuire Air Force Base. Okay, so. as you saw from the footage they let me shoot, doing about 200 knots the whole time, right? Yeah, about two, yeah, 215. Yeah, had a little bit of a tailwind, so it was good times. As you can see behind me, we did a stopover at the 106th Operations Group. And I'm assuming, based on what's on the flight line, that these guys fly C-130s. So, like you heard pilots say, we're in West Hampton, New York. This was an unexpected uh, leg. There was a little confusion at Andrews about what airplane I was going to be on and where we were going and so forth and so on. And the DV was the Undersecretary of the Air Force, Alex Wagner, the Undersecretary for Manpower. Cool guy. We had a great conversation and his staff was with him. So that was kind of fun. They're stopping here to talk to a National Guard unit, um, I guess about manpower stuff. So anyway, getting the airplane fueled up and we'll be ready for the second leg. Like complete. Hey, Kurt. sorry for this. All right, here we hey. are. <laughs> Good morning. So this is Connecticut Double ASF. Okay. Uh, where we do most of our tactical flight operations out of. Uh, right now, our two Blackhawk units are deployed. Where are they? Uh, they are. Uh, are we allowed to say? 
it's task force enduring something uh <laughs> I mean, in the, the, support of NATO ops? What no, no, world? no. It, it's uh, Operation Iraqi uh, oh. Sustainability. Okay. Um, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, they're uh, they're operating for CENTCOM. Okay. So you have We're Black Hawk and also obviously Chinooks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, our Chinook unit is one of the more uh, well-known Chinook units. Uh, if you Google a Chinook, you'll f find their picture from their first, uh, the two-wheel touchdown. Oh, oh. Uh, uh, on, I think uh, I used that actually as a thumbnail as when, a, you, when the Chinook was grounded. Yeah, <laughs> right a few months ago. I think so, sir. Yeah. When this kind of opportunity arises from an episode that I did, kind of oh by the way, which again this is your life, which is the grounding. The chief of staff says, okay, too many mid airs. Um, let's shut it down, and and until you do a safety stand down, uh, you guys can't fly, right? I was the safety officer in two different squadrons, VF-143. Anybody know the name of VF-143? The Puke and Dogs, right? And then I was the safety officer during my department head tour in VF-102, the Diamondbacks, which is this squadron, oh, the, that squadron, yeah. Um, although that's an older picture. Um, so this is an F-14A. You can tell by the turkey feathers, the Pratt & Whitney engine uh, is what the F-14A has. I was lucky after my first tour in VF-32, the Swordsman, I was in B squadrons for the rest of my four remaining squadron tours. The Navy was very good to me. All I did was fly airplanes. I was aide to a three-star for a little bit in there, and then I taught at the Naval Academy. So I had a really cool career. Also, as Kurt was alluding to, I was the editor of Approach Magazine, which is the Naval Aviation Safety Magazine at the Naval Safety Center. Okay, so I wanna talk about four categories of mishaps. First category, aeromechanical misunderstandings. Every airplane, is subject to the laws of physics, right? So the F-14 particularly, uh, like the movie Top Gun, except they kind of cartoonish it up a little bit, but it had a tendency to flat spin and compressor stall. The place you could not go is what we called region four. Region four was high angle of attack, slow airspeed. Right, so if you're dog fighting somebody and it gets into the, one of these slow speed, somebody has to slide behind somebody else and you're kind of trying to stop downrange travel, if you push it too far, like maybe you're like, okay, I'm gonna make this move, you know, the AOA is pegged, boot rudder, and then the airplane yaw gets away from you, the airplane would go into flat spin like that. And once in a flat spin, if you did not react quickly, it would stay in a flat spin. Once you're in a flat spin, in fact, if you recognize you're in a flat spin, it was canopy jettison, Rio command eject. It wasn't like try to keep saving the airplane. And it didn't even matter what your altitude was once you're in a flat spin. That's how serious a flat spin was. Also, that's what Goose didn't do in terms of the bold face procedures, right? He didn't do canopy jettison. Had he done canopy jettison, which is step seven, then eject, he wouldn't have hit his head on the canopy but that would have been not quite the same story, would it? So this was also a problem besides dogfighting. It was a problem in the pattern. Where were you guys in like 93, 94? Was anybody in, in the army? In this room. Okay, everybody? Okay, good. All right. Because of the political pressure, there were some folks who were put into carrier aviation that if you look at their record through flight school, maybe they shouldn't have been there, all right? And that is not a gender statement. That is not a political statement. That's just a fact. As you guys know, the airplane doesn't know race, sexual, sexual orientation, or gender. All right, what we're seeing here. All right, so stop it. She's overshooting, and right when she's making that move, the left motor compressor stalls. Perfectly wrong time for that to happen. All right, so. Left motor compressor stalls, the airplane starts to roll in the direction of the motor that's not working. What you need to do, first thing you need to do, don't touch the stick, because if you go right stick to fight left roll, it's gonna exacerbate the roll. That's one of the aeromechanic tendencies of the F-14. Well known, you do it in the simulator, over and over and over, don't touch the stick. So the first move is right rudder, and then get the AOA under control. So attitude 10 degrees or less, AOA 14 units or less. Again, this is a terrible situation. It couldn't have been worse. But in any case, she mismanages the single engine situation and 
you can hear the, the LSOs are screaming eject. I think that saved the Rio's life. So the other thing is the ejection sequence in the F-14, canopy would go, half a second later the back seat would go, and then 0.4 seconds after that the front seat would go. Okay, so that's a lifetime literally between the, the, when you pull the handle and, and the pilot comes out. And in that case, the Rio barely got a, a swing in the chute and Kara did not, so she was killed in the mishap. That is an example of the aeromechanic misunderstandings, which is mismanage an inherent thing in the F-14. I also worked V-22. That was my first job out of the Navy. Um, I worked at Nav Air, the Naval Air Systems Command on the V-22 program. From 02 to 05, which were the war years in terms of getting that airplane fielded. So the early history of that airplane is checkered with maintenance malpractice, bad command decisions, and guys flying the airplane beyond its capabilities. Okay, this is the crash site at Marana. So what happened basically is operational test got ahead of developmental test. This mishap, and again, we call them mishaps, not accidents, because there is no such thing as just happenstance. Any mishap has a chain of events that can be stopped. That's how military safety operates. This is out in sort of the General Yuma. They're working with the Marine Air Weapons Training School, MOTS, which is sort of Marine Corps Top Gun. The guys from the Opaval Squadron were trying to show their buddies at MOTS what the V-22 could do. The placarded rate of descent for the V-22 was 800 feet per minute. And so through their own flight experience, like this airplane can come downhill a lot faster than that. 800 feet per minute is, is underperforming the airplane. And so they started pushing the envelope literally for, hey, I was doing 1500, I was just fine. So forth and so on. Not knowing that they were in deep vortex ring state. What we know about the V-22 is the thing that makes it do this also makes the disc loading very high, right? Again, this airplane can go 275 knots, but it is still subject to the laws of physics. And we used to say, people go, can it auto-rotate? You go, well, in the strictest sense, yes. Of course, you're going 20,000 feet per minute is your rate of descent, and you cannot arrest it. You know, uh, but yeah, it's technically all rotating as it does that, right? So it's not like, you know, when you're in your Kiowa or whatever and you can really do a nice flare and all the stuff you used to do in flight school. At this nighttime exercise, two V-22s, they are coming downhill at 2,000 feet per minute rate of descent, right? Because they want to do a quick insert of the Marines in both airplanes. So coming downhill, the trail pilot doesn't see this, but what happens is the lead in vortex ring state suddenly departs, right? Because the airplane's in deep stall and it hits the ground. So what the trail pilot sees is the explosion. And so he programs the nacelles forward just in time to save everybody's lives, but the airplane has strike damage. It's, it's destroyed as well, but everybody lived. That is what caused this mishap. So that was strike one. Strike two and three was another systems misunderstanding. New River, a few months later, New River, North Carolina, where the uh, East Coast helicopter guys are, Marine Corps site, on final, got a warning light. And the guy, the pilot, kept pushing the warning light out just because he didn't want a warning light. Not knowing that every time you hit the master reset, the prop rotor pitch goes to zero. So if he'd done nothing, he would have been fine. But because of systems misunderstanding, he induced a mishap that killed him and the, four, the three other guys in the airplane. Think about what your, where your airplane is, is sus, subject to the laws of physics um, and, and how sometimes maybe we're not fully cognizant of that in certain flight regimes. That was quick and dirty. It was. What do you think, Kurt? It was excellent. Thank you so much, Mr. Carroll. Yeah, well, again, thanks for the invite. <laughs> It's good to be among the people out here doing it. Here's the airplane we're heading home in. This is a C-26, right? Cool. Metro liner, or Metro the, uh, liner. Texas sewer pipe. Texas sewer pipe. San Antonio. Huh? <laughs> I stand corrected. Let's get
back here at Andrews. I'm with my pilot, John Hurley, who is also a fan of the channel. That's right. So, um, he came up to me as we were leaving. A lot of pressure on me on that landing. Yeah, no, you, you nailed you it. I've, it was fantastic. <laughs> so, John, let me have some stick time. And so this is a C-26, what's the nickname of the airport? It's a San Antonio sewer pipe. Was a San Antonio sewer pipe. Loving nickname, 80s, uh, it was an 80s interstate like a commuter. Oh yeah, you know, okay. Small airlines. Crazy thing is certificated for 19 people, so the Americans were a lot smaller in the, in the 80s. Yeah, obviously. I don't know how you said 19 I people. I don't know how you would put 19 yeah. people. But it's a cool airplane. What John showed me was the roll responses, like Pretty curling 50 pound dumbbells. Yeah, yeah. So I got yeah, some big shoulders. Time. Yeah, big shoulders. Though. Right, right. So John, I hope to see you again yeah. um, down the road here. He's given me a invite to come talk to the North Carolina is it the Guard or the Reserve? Yeah, North Carolina National Guard. National Guard in December. They have their, their uh, safety stand safety down. Safety stand down day. So uh, we've proved that the channel can leave my attic occasionally today. <laughs> we had a whirlwind time, <laughs> but some so. real good good uh, opportunities to, to say hi to the folks. should mention John is a Apache driver by Warfare Trade, and, and you do this sort of uh, in well, between I'm, flying I'm, the Apache. I'm not flying the Apache anymore. I'm only flying this But you have a lot of experience yeah. in the Apache. Every once in a while when they need an old guy, they go bring me they, out of retirement. When they want the old guy out of the, off the bench, yeah. John's there. Say, hey, yeah. All right. Well, thanks, my friend. Yeah, Fly you. safe. All right. We had a great time today. If you're not already a subscriber, become one so you don't miss anything. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please consider using the super thanks, the heart icon below, or become a patron at patreon.com slash wardcarroll. And in the meantime, as always, I look forward to talking to you again very soon.